Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. Top Woodworking Gadgets. Bit of a corny title. However, there are certain things that are not necessarily wood related that after 35 plus years of doing this, I have come to rely on. In fact, I even give them top billing in my drawers in the cabinets behind me. I'm going to walk you through each one of them and give you a brief on how they're used. Maybe something you're interested in. Stay tuned. <laughs> I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. I started woodworking in a serious way in the 1980s and I actually earned a living from it. Now over the years I've fallen victim to gadgets like anybody else but I've actually found some items that have really been come, become a critical part of how I work. I'm going to go through them, I'm going to give you the top 10, I'm going to show you and explain to you how I use them and I've tried to prioritize them in from, from 10 down to the, my number one. So you're going to have to stay to the end to find out what my number one gadget is. But I think this is going to benefit you. And you may find some things that you never thought about using. In somewhat an unconventional way, they have become critical in how I do my work. Okay, I'm going to start at number 10. Number one is my favorite. Number 10 is well, it's whatever number 10 is compared to number one. I don't like sandpaper, try not to use it very much, but there are times when you have to. And I find the very best product is this stuff made by Porter Cable. It's a little bit expensive, but you know what? It's worth paying for the convenience. The nice thing about it is it's got a, st a sticky back. So I make sanding blocks. I do, uh, oh, I have every imaginable sanding block. Take a piece of MDF, just stick it on there, trim it all the way around. The nice thing about it is if you're having to get right into a corner, you can simply stick it on, set it down against the something that you're not going to cut, don't worry about cutting, and then trim that right along the edge so that you can get right into that corner. I, I use or keep the 120, the 150, 220, and 320 is the highest grit that I think they make. But like I said, it's it's expensive way of buying sandpaper, but it is so convenient and you get to use all of it, it probably is actually cheaper in the long run. Number nine is shim stock. Now I bought this when I was teaching out in Seattle several years ago and it's a 1000 steel shim stock. I'm down to that last little bit but I'll show you how I use it. Nice thing about it is that uh, at one thou most feeler gauges you get only go down to a thou and a half. You can easily cut this with scissors and probably the one area where I use it the most when I'm fitting a drawer and trying to get that final fit so that it's perfect and I'm trying to determine where it might be hanging up, I'll take a shim stock like that and move it along just to make sure there isn't any spot that's tight. I find it invaluable for doing that. Probably should be even higher on my list but the other stuff is really good too. So 1,000 shim stock. Feeler gauge, this actually should be a little bit higher than I've placed it but I'm going to show you how I use it. The nice thing about this one, and typically they only go down to a thou and a half, at least the ones that are commonly available. This one goes up to 35, and on the small end it's thou and a half, two thou, two and a half, three, and it goes one thou increments up to, uh, oh, I don't know, 15 or 20. But here's how I use it, or at least one of the ways. Back to drawer construction. When you're taking that and fitting that drawer back to the opening, the opening isn't always perfectly square and your shooting board is designed to cut square. Sometimes you need to pull it out. So what I'll do is use my feeler gauge in there and I obviously I can get whatever number I want but then that'll allow me to cut whatever angle I need on that piece. And instead of trying to find a scrap of wood that's just right and then if I need to I can record it so I can do the next one the same way. So I think these are invaluable as well. This is number seven and it's really not fair to call this a gadget because it's a legitimate plane, small as it is. This is the Lee Nielsen squirrel tail. And what I like about it is smaller than a block plane and does that job that's just um, so convenient when based on the size. I keep this in my shop apron. I like the squirrel tail because this squirrel's tail goes up into your palm, index finger sits right on that little depression, hold it with the two thumb and uh, middle finger on the side. Sometimes I'll go in and set the blade so that it's on a bit of an angle. That way if I need to come in here and cut a chamfer and I want to get it done quick, if I'm working on the left side I can take a much heavier cut. If it's 
needs to be refined to a finish, I can just go to the opposite side, which is taking a much lighter cut. I actually did that in the opposite. That's the heavy cut on that side, and the lighter cut is on this one. They actually look the same, don't they? Well, I'd go in there and tap it. No, actually it isn't. If you sight down there, you'll see it's actually sticking up higher on the right side. So that will give you your hurry up and get it done. And then you can go over to the other side just to refine it, get a little better cut. It is a pain to sharpen because the blade is so small. It's also a pain to adjust because you got to get in this little hammer and tap, tap one side or the other. But considering how it gets used, the sharp blade will stay sharp for a long time. So that is uh, probably one of my more valuable gadgets. Number six are dowel centers. So what these are, are little steel pins. So this is a half inch. If you're using dowels as a means of joining whatever it is you're building, you can get these in different sizes. I actually have them in half, seven sixteenths, three quarter, quarter, might even have three, I have three sixteenths as well. And you're going to want several of them. Now, I'm going to show you an example. I do a lot of non-traditional stuff. So in attaching this top section to this standing desk we're building, what I did, I used a whole bunch of quarter inch dowels. This is not put in place yet. And then after you've drilled the holes in this piece, you put in your dowel center. And what I do is just simply put a piece of masking tape over top of them. And what that'll do is it'll prevent it from falling out, especially if you're going to use it upside down like that is. The point will go through the tape quite easily, but instead of having to balance things, things falling out, that'll just sit down there like that. And then you put it in position, get it exactly where you want it. I would usually have a block on both sides and on the back, get it exactly where you want it, and then just take a rubber mallet and tap it. When you remove it, it'll give you your little points. You can go in there with a brad point and drill the hole, and it's precise. There's lots of applications for it, but I would consider these to be really critical. Dowel center points, and remember, make sure you get enough so that you're not needing eight and only got seven. Number five. Now, this is a little self-serving because we actually supply this, but I'll show you why you might want to get one, and it's plain wax. When you're planing wood, whether it's soft or hard, it's nice to be having your effort applied just to pushing the blade through the wood instead of overcoming the friction between the sole, the plane, and the wood. And I've always used just used a piece of wax like that. But what I find nice about this, keep it in my pocket, just take the cap off, give it a long squiggle. Now we actually worked with the manufacturer to four or five different formulas before we finally found the wax that was hard enough that it didn't smear, but soft enough to leave a little film on there. And the way that that reduces the friction is really amazing. It probably cuts the effort in half. Now, people always ask, what about it affecting the final finish? Well, I typically would not wax my plane prior to the final pass. Other than that, it'll have worn off long before. And you just rotate the bottom to bring the wax up higher as you wear it out. Number four is a little artist palette knife. And the way I use this is for applying glue and dovetailing. Some brush it on, but I find that the brush leaves it all over. With the little palette knife, I can put a little bit on there and I can place it exactly where I want it. Especially when you're getting in, if you've got small pins getting in on both sides, it's just invaluable. Nice thing about it is it's steel, so if you forget to take the, the glue off before it dries, just take an old chisel and scrape it off and you're good to go. You've got to have one of these if you're doing any kind of joinery. Works mortise and tenon, anything like that. All right, this is number three. Now, this is something you probably wouldn't associate with woodworking. And they're vernier calipers. These are actually the dial version. I find it much easier to understand. And here's the best example where I use them. When we make our wood hinge boxes, that hinge actually starts off as a dowel. And the closer it is to the exact size, the better. So we make our own dowel. In fact, this is actually made out of uh, tiger or fiddleback maple. But we want that to be right on the money. So using vernier calipers, you can go in there. Now that needs to be 250. It's actually 252. That would be acceptable. I sometimes use it when I'm dimensioning lumber by hand. If it's a drawer side and I want it to be exact, I'll use it to measure both sides to see how close I am. So a set of vernier calipers, I think, will go a long way to helping up your game. All right, we're down to number two. Now, this one is so important in our shop, it actually gets top billing in my tool cabinet. 
This top drawer is full of tape. Everything from green painter's tape, blue, yellow automotive refinishing tape. Now the nice thing about this, these two are four thousandths of an inch in thickness. This one is five thou. When we're making handles, sometimes we have to have very precise adjustments. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, use any combination of these layers of this tape to build up exactly what I need. We also have st hockey stick tape. I've got uh, double-sided tape. I've got regular packing tape. I've got heavy strapping tape. I've got duct tape back there, the foil kind, as well as the gray that everybody knows about. Now let me show you a couple of examples of where we use it. Stick tape is exceptional for improving the grip on something like the handle of an F-clamp. In fact, I actually did a video on showing you how to wrap these, just like hockey sticks, the top end of a hockey stick. Check out that video and it'll walk you through it. I also use it on my fret saw. In fact, we sell our fret saws already taped like that so that you can improve your grip. I want to show you a couple of examples of how we use this that I think are really phenomenal. I don't remember who showed me this, but this is uh, probably one of the best tips I've found in the last year or two. It, using blue painter's tape. Now you know this stuff does not have a ton of grip. It's fairly easy to remove. But if you need to have a temporary handle, I'll show you the example. We're in the process of building this standing desk on our online workshop. And you can check that out over here. But we were just trying to decide what we were going to do for a handle. So we needed something temporary so that in the process of fitting it, we could get a hold of it. Here's where I ran across this. Put a piece of tape on there. Take what's going to be your handle and tape it as well. Now this involves using something called cyanacrylate or crazy glue. And I'm going to use the medium consistency one. And you just put that on one side. You don't want it smearing, so be careful with it. Now I'm using what's called an accelerator. That just speeds up the curing. And I'm going to spray the opposite piece, position it, and just be a human clamp for a few seconds. That accelerator will cause that to dry a lot quicker than it would normally. Now, as far as a temporary handle, that actually works incredibly well. I was amazed at how strong it is. And when it comes time to getting it off, all you got to do is just break the seal between the two pieces of tape and then peel off your tape. Doesn't leave any mark, doesn't leave any residue. Fantastic for things like that. Uh, I have a good friend named Ahmed in Southern California. And, and when we make a small wood hinge box like this, sometimes we actually miter the joint instead of dovetailing. That's just a fancy way of what we did. But what he will do, he showed me this, stretch out your piece of tape, upside down, sticky side up, and then take all of your pieces lined up carefully. So point of the miter to point of the miter. You're gonna have four pieces all laid out with a little extra on either side. Glue your miters and then just fold it all together and take the outside pieces and fold that over so you now have a box. And that pressure of uh, folding the, that miter together, having been glued on both sides with this tape, it acts as an amazing clamp in holding that together. So impressed with that. So tape, of all things, different types of tape, you'll find hundreds of uses for it. Don't pass up on this one. Drum roll number one. This you'll appreciate as you age. And these, this, I call it my headgear. So these, in conjunction with my glasses, I, I wish I could tell you what the numbers mean, something about a diopter, I don't know. But the nice thing about it is when you're doing small work like that and you want to be able to get in and see exactly what you're doing, there is no substitute for that. They're not terribly expensive and you can change these lenses. I just have a second pair. These ones have a number five on them. So I know it has something to do with where the focal point is. These ones are going to get you a little bit closer. These are the ones that I use the most, but for aging eyes, Nothing like it. So here are the honorable mentions. Number one is going to be Renaissance wax. This stuff is incredibly expensive, but it's great wax. You can use, I use it for finishing on small pieces or adding a little bit of luster after something has been oiled. This, it's not the glue, it's the applicator. That little bottle comes in so handy when you're trying to place glue in a tight spot or for just feeding my palette knife when I'm buttering dovetails. 
Next one would be, you already saw it, but we never mentioned it really, cyanacrylate, which is a super glue for wood. It comes in three consistencies. This one is the thin. Like I said, this is consistency of water. This only works if the parts are tight. And I, I want to show you the best example. When, we, when I make my wood hinge boxes, especially the ones that are finger jointed, put the entire joint together and then on the inside just run a little bead of this water thin glue. It'll, it'll uh, capillary action will pull it all through there and sets up. It's incredible. Trying to put that together with regular glue is a nightmare. The medium, you saw how I used that, and the thick. And uh, whatever application where you need something that isn't going to run out on you, that's where you want to use it. And the accelerator just sets it up a little bit quicker. This, these are called hand blocks and we use these a lot. In fact, I usually have them stored in here. That's what's left of it. What it is, it's a silicon abrasive in a rubber compound. So instead of like sandpaper where the abrasive simply sits on the top side, this is actually all the way through it. So as the block wears away, you're always, uh, you always have abrasive to use. And I'll show you how fast it works. This is a the bronze side of a plane, so if I want to clean that up, it doesn't take much, and that'll bring that right back to what it was like new. Now there's three different consistencies, or grits. The green package is medium, the red is coarse, and the yellow is fine. And most woodworking planes and tools have a, uh, <clears throat> a final grind that is equivalent to the green. So if I were to use the red, this would make scratches. If I would use the yellow, it would make shiny spots. But by using the green, it'll just blend right in with the rest of it. Great way to clean up any kind of surface rust or oxidation. Finally is our Tajima tape. Now we found these a couple of years ago. So impressed we now stock them. They are so accurate. They've got features in there that I've never seen on other tapes. First of all is it's very easy to see. Black on white. Not a whole lot of extra information. Actually has the writing on the back. You'll notice that the clip has three pins in there. So it's, and by the way, that moves so that when, whether you're measuring from the outside or from the inside, that slides to compensate for the thickness of the clip itself. And you can see how heavy that is. And typically what happens to a measuring tape, you drop it on the floor and when it hits, it bends that clip. Well, these actually have a little uh, shock absorber right there so that that is protected. Now this one has an exterior case. I take that off because I keep it in my shop apron. But if you're looking for a great measuring tape that's extremely accurate, that's the best one to get. So here's what I want to hear from, or here's what I want to hear from you. If there's something that you use that's what we might call non-traditional, love to hear about it for my own use and also help share it with others. Hope this has been helpful. We'll see you in our next video. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.